Human trafficking in the illicit massage industry is big, it is complex, but it is not inevitable. I think it's important that we recognize what we're dealing with, and that's organized crime. We're dealing with groups of people. We're not just dealing with one massage location. Even though we're talking about illicit operators, these are people who are motivated by one thing and one thing only, money. When you look to see who's making the money off of the workers inside of these businesses, you have to figure out who they are, where that money is going, and what they're doing with that money. Money is the main motivation that's driving this industry. And so we need to work and focus on that when we're looking into these cases criminally. Our goal is to take out the top person, the bottom person, and everybody in between and make sure that everyone is accountable for their role in allowing this to persist. When you put the thing that they care about the most, money, on the line, they think long and hard if they're really interested in taking this financial risk. On the state level, it's imperative that whatever we do, we include and incorporate the state massage therapy board regulators. These are the people that they are committed for public protection and they have the experience and know-how both from the enforcement side and from the professional therapy side. Creating an inoperable environment means that you're engaging landlords so that these businesses cannot easily rent. It's also engaging your regulatory agencies so that we are not giving out licenses to criminal businesses. When we create an inoperable environment, what we are doing is denying traffickers space to do business and make money. When you have a city that takes this issue very seriously and institute a very powerful ordinance, you can completely eradicate illicit massage businesses from that community. We need to stop blaming the victims and giving traffickers excuses. In order to advocate for victims well and to serve them fully, you need to have cultural humility. Culture plays such an important role when it comes to understanding the dynamic of the illicit massage businesses. So only when we put ourselves into the survivor's shoes could we truly understand how to provide them with better services. It's very critical that we have service providers with the linguistic cultural competency to serve victims of the illicit massage industry because they're predominantly Asian women coming from Asian countries with language and cultural barriers. When we go beyond the storefront, we see traffickers that are organized and sophisticated and terribly effective. So this demands from us a more organized and sophisticated response as an anti-trafficking community. We're talking about across sectors. We're talking about law enforcement. We're talking about NGOs, uh, service providers, uh, caseworkers, uh, victim advocates, different governmental agencies. When we do nothing about this industry, these criminal networks continue to thrive, they continue to grow, and women will continue to be exploited. <laughs>